All right, everyone, this is going to be a quick guide on how to use a REST client to interact with the Forge APIs. So more than likely, everyone that's watching this already knows what Forge is. It's a collection of APIs that uh, tie together the different Autodesk products and platforms that they have under a kind of an umbrella uh, that lives in the cloud. Um, so for me, coming uh, from the architecture side of things, uh, you know, the BIM 360 API and the data management APIs are are some of the things that I work with the most. And I won't call myself experienced or, or I'm not really a beginner, I'm kind of in between, but uh, I think no matter where you are and working with the Forge APIs, you, you want a way to test things, to uh, see what you get uh, based on certain parameters and certain queries. And uh, that's why we're gonna look at a REST client and how that's going to make it a little bit easier for us. So if you don't know what a REST client is, uh, for this particular video, we're gonna use Postman. Um, but there's other ones like Insomnia, there's a ton of different ones. Um, and the general idea of these clients is that you uh, put in an endpoint, an API endpoint, uh, something like uh, something like you might find on uh, the BIM 360 APIs, like get projects or get hubs. You put in the endpoint and then you get an instant response uh, without having to hard code it. So Postman looks something a little bit like this. We put in our endpoint up the top, uh, what we actually want to get. In this case, it's the hubs. And then it gives us the response here in real time. Um, so it saves us the trouble of having to hard code this into JavaScript or .NET, C Sharp, whatever. Um, and it just lets us test out uh, what we can actually get from Forge. What is the data that, that is going to be returned uh, for us based on our queries. Um, so this is helpful, I think, when you're prototyping, when you're prototyping large applications, or even if you're just trying to get into Forge and you don't really know where to start. Um, I think this is a great way to just see what you get back. And um, I think it'll also help you start getting ideas about what you can do with that data that you start um, getting back, actually. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the first thing that we're gonna need to do is obviously download Postman um, and install it. Uh, the second thing we're going to need to do is uh, make sure we have a Forge account. And if you don't have a Forge account, uh, set one up, please. And uh, we're going to need to create an application. So I'm going to um, try and include the link to this um, as well in the video, make sure everybody has access to it. But um, I'm also assuming that most of us already know. OK, so this is the create an application dialog. We don't need to be too descriptive. Um, we want to make sure that we have access to all the APIs so that all the endpoints are available to us. And I'm just going to name this something uh, simple. So Postman tutorial, uh, add a description here that's super helpful. Uh, the callback URL, I'm going to leave this blank for right now, but we're going to talk about it um, later because it is going to be important to what we do. Website URL doesn't really matter. So let's create this app. No, oh, of course, it's going to want one, though. OK, now that we've hooked winked it into thinking we have an actual callback URL, we have our app and it's created. OK, so for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to use this client ID and this client secret. Um, please be sure to create your own app, though, because after I'm done recording this video, I am going to delete this app uh, because it's, uh, you know, obviously it's a bit of a security issue if people are using uh, the same information to um, do things that they're doing and not do things that I'm doing. So once we have this set up, uh, let's fire up Postman, uh, have it installed. So let's get that going. Uh, your Postman is obviously going to look pretty bare bones. It's not going to have these folders and, and this kind of stuff in it already pre-populated. Um, but not to worry, we're going to do all of that from scratch. So I will show you how to get that done. OK, so the first things first, uh, we're going to need to set up an environment. Um, and an environment is, is kind of exactly what it sounds if you've um, done any Python or if you've um, done any, I guess, JavaScript work, you know that an environment has dependencies, an environment has variables. Um, and same thing here, we're going to need to set up that information so we don't have to manually enter that in every time or so that we don't have to hard code it. Um, so up here in the upper right, where it says no environment, uh, we click the gear icon. I have one already set up, but I am going to add a new one uh, just to show everybody how it's done. So let's call this uh, Forge Tutorial. And then here you can see that we have some placeholders for variables and for values. So this is where we are going to need to put in things like our client ID and our client 
secret. Okay. And I'm just going to copy these from here again. Um, one more reminder just to uh, be sure that you make your own and you don't just copy these from the video because they will not work after this. So we're going to put that in. Um, it's going to populate the current value once we put in the initial value. Great. Um, and then we're going to just click Add. Great. All right. So our environment is now here. We can click at it at any time. We can change things. We can add more uh, variables, more information. It doesn't really matter. Um, but it's created. And now that it's created, we actually need to set it. So in the drop down here, click it. We got Forge Tutorial. And we're good to go. So now that we have the environment set up, we need to create one of these buckets for us. Um, if you see here, I've, I've grouped mine based on OAuth type. Uh, but you can group them however you want, really. I mean. Um, Maybe it's per application, maybe it's per project, maybe it's per team. It absolutely doesn't matter. Um, but we go here to create a new collection, as it's called. And so I'm just going to call this um, Postman Tutorial. We're going to add a super descriptive description, of course. Um, and then we're going to need to set up authorization. Now, if you recall, um, we talked a little bit about the BIM 360 API and the data management API. For a lot of operations in those APIs, like the, for example, publishing a model, uh, you'll notice that the documentation requires a three three legged OAuth token. Well, uh, that can be somewhat challenging if you're if you're using a REST client, just because it's not as as directly straightforward as getting a, a two legged token. Uh, so I am going to show you how to do that. So under this authorization tab. Um, make sure you click the drop down and hit OAuth 2.0. Okay. Um, make sure we add the OAuth data to request headers. That should be it by default. Um, and then here where it says access token, yours is probably going to be blank uh, because you have not been um, sending calls and you haven't set this up yet. So we're going to need to click this button, get new access token. And mine is uh, pretty largely filled out from previous work, but I'm going to go through it step by step and, and make sure we understand what's going on. So token name, this can be anything. I've called it, you know, whatever. Uh, feel free to change that up as long as it's descriptive and you know what it means. Grant type. Um, I want to highlight this actually because I, before putting this together, I ran into some tutorials online and they had this set to authorization code and it absolutely did not work for me. I mean, at all. Um, maybe there's been a change in the Forge API or maybe there's been a change in Postman since the time of those tutorials, but regardless, I absolutely could not get the authorization code um, grant type to work, and instead I would suggest that you use implicit. Um, if anybody knows why uh, that wasn't working or if anybody has a reason why implicit should not be used, please let me know. Um, I'm kind of learning a lot of this stuff in parallel with you all, so just a heads up on that. Um, but yeah, make sure to, to get it set as explicit or implicit um, because you might have some issues otherwise. Okay, callback URL. Uh, we said we'd talk about this later, and now is the time. So for doing this type of OAuth um, in Postman, the three-legged OAuth, we're going to need to make sure that this callback URL is set in both Postman and in our Forge application. Okay, so it's very important that you match this exact URL and that you save it to your Forge application, which is what I just did now, and that you um, save it to the Postman instance right here. So the next one down, auth URL, this is going to be the same. Um, just copy paste this thing. Uh, client ID, okay. So you might be wondering where we're getting this from. So if you remember a little bit earlier on, we set up that environment. And that's exactly where we're pulling this from. So instead of having to hard code this every time or, or send it every single time, uh, we use this uh, double curly bracket notation. We get some autocomplete popping up. And then this uh, lets us know that you know some variables are in our um, environment that we can just use. So I'm going to use the client ID. Um, and this is this is nice both for from a security standpoint, but also from a shareability standpoint. You know, you might want to you might want to share your API calls with a collaborator or a partner, but you might not want them to have access to your client ID, right? You might want them to be using theirs. So um, keeping this information in your environment rather than your calls is is definitely a good practice. 
Um, scope, I have several scopes here set up. Um, feel free to add as many or as few as you want. I think those are documented pretty well in the BIM 360 API documentation. Um, for a lot of this, you probably will just need data read, um, but it's totally up to you. Um, state, I've set that, uh, I've just kind of left that to be blank, uh, fill it out with the default stuff. And for the client authentication, we want to make sure that we set it to the send as basic auth header. Um, so now that we have this filled out and it you know matches the structure pretty closely, we can click request token and see if it actually works. So the first thing it'll do is it'll pop up a little window like this. And the first ever time you do it, it's going to want you to put in your email and your Autodesk password. I've obviously made a bunch of calls, so it, it has that saved to cookies. But um, if this is your first time, you're going to need to actually, actually log into um, Autodesk and make sure that you do have authorization to um, access the files that you're trying to access. So once you get to here, we're just going to click allow. And this window here lets us know that we do now have an access token and we can use, uh, we can make calls from it. So we say use token and great, that's all set up. Um, I won't go into any of these other tabs here for now. It's not really important to what we're doing. Uh, I'm just going to click create and we're just going to um, be able to access our new, our new collection here. Okay, so right now it's empty. So like the little tooltip says, we're going to actually need to add a request to do something. So let's do that. So the first one I'm going to do is just a super basic one that we looked at, um, I think, earlier, which is the uh, Get Hubs. So for example, let's say I'm going through this tutorial. You know, I want to publish a Cloud Workshed Revit model. I go down and I get to step one, and it's pointing me to this uh, Get Hubs thing. Um, so if you're a beginner, you might be wondering, like, what, you know, what is that? What is it? Like, what is it going to give me? Um, they have some examples here, of course, response examples and request examples. But especially if you're a beginner, I, I find that to be, you know, sometimes a little bit overwhelming. Um, and, you know, conversely, if you're experienced, uh, you might completely understand this example and it might be very, very clear to you, but you might want to see your data here as opposed to this kind of, you know, boilerplate generic stuff. You might want to um, actually see if your response looks like this response. So that's where Postman comes in. Um, so the first information that we're going to need to grab from here is this right here, which is the URL. So we're going to go. Uh, we're going to, sorry, keep that copy to the clipboard. I forgot I didn't finish actually making the, um, the request. So we're going to need to name this. So we're going to call it get hubs and I'll add the tutorial flag just so I know what this is. Of course, as always, we have to be as descriptive as possible and we're going to save this guy. Okay. So when you click, when you click the new request, you're going to notice that it's very, very empty. Um, and the first step is going to be pasting uh, that copied URL up here um, and making sure to set whether it's get or post or, you know, whatever it says in the BIM 360 documentation. In this case, it's get. Okay. So we're going to do get and we're going to look at our URL here. We're going to make sure that there's no variables. There's nothing um, that we actually have to add in. We're also going to briefly skim the documentation and see what kind of headers we want. So it looks like it wants, of course, our authorization, um, but nothing really else. So that means that we should be pretty safe to make this call. So let's give it a shot. Let's click send. And there we go. So you can see that, you know, instantly we're kind of, we're getting this feedback. We're getting this response. And this response is specific to our account. It's specific to our, uh, in this case, BIM 360 setup. Um, and, you know, of course, why, the reason why this is pretty neat is because you can start to chain a number of these together and without actually having to write any JavaScript or .NET or code, you can very quickly uh, query things and um, just see, see, see what you get and see what the data is. Um, okay, so that's a pretty basic request, right? We don't actually add any information to the end uh, or to the request itself. If we start getting a little bit uh, deeper into, um, let's use, continue to use this tutorial as an example, but if we get a little bit deeper into these workflows, we start getting to the point where um, we actually need to add in uh, variables. So for example, hub ID, um, you can see that the, the semicolon notation indicates that this is a variable, and this is something that we're going to need to pass in um, if we want to get to, you know, for example, step two. 
So Postman is pretty nice about doing that, I think at least. Um, so let's go to this method here, or this endpoint, sorry. Um, so you can see that right here, it's parsed out. Um, if we copy that, and if we go to Postman, and I'm just going to replace this, pretend like it's a it's a new one. But and you can see that as soon as I pasted it in, it recognized that um, that variable and it added it in as a parameter. Okay, so if you wanted to now fire off this method, uh, you could very easily just fill in the value here of a hub ID and fire it off. So I'm going to do that really quickly. Uh, for example, this is this is a, a hub ID that I got back in my first call. So I'm going to do something like that, hub ID, boom, send. Great. And now that's giving me, you know, projects that are specifically in that hub. All right, let's go back to the normal one. Great. So you can see that, you know, pretty quickly you can, you can, uh, really test out a, a number of calls, a number of methods, just by entering in key and values uh, here and seeing what you get back. Um, and again, the great thing about Postman and other REST clients is that you can very easily share this stuff. Um, you can build out a collection of methods um, and share this with your coworkers, with your team, whoever else you're collaborating with. Um, you can easily share it so that you guys are all testing in the same uh, on the same platform and, and you're pretty agile uh, with the kinds of logic you're trying to test out. Um, additionally, there's uh, some pretty great existing resources about uh, Postman on a two-legged authentication. Uh, I'll try and post the link as well. Um, again, there just weren't a lot of resources for three-legged OAuth, so I wanted to include that as well. Um, thought people might find that helpful. Um, so yeah, please let me know if you have any feedback, any questions. Um, and you know, alternatively, if you're more of an insomnia user and you want to do um, this type of uh, workflow with insomnia instead, you're more than uh, welcome to do that. So thank you.